Boys and girls, this is William T. Williams. He is a very famous artist from right here in North Carolina. His artwork has been seen all over the world. His art is abstract, meaning he doesn't paint people or things. Instead, he paints shapes. He begins many of his paintings drawing a grid of squares. Then he paints fractions of the painting different colors. For example, in this shape, about one third is bright red and one third is a darker red. Now that you've learned a little bit about William T. Williams, you're ready for today's lesson. However, I do have to warn you, today's lesson is a complete work of fiction and the events mentioned here never actually happened. While William T. Williams is a real person, today he's just a fictitious main character. And so, our story begins. Currently, William T. Williams has his paintings on display in an art museum nearby. Just last night at the art museum, William T. Williams had a small painting class for four aspiring artists. Although the museum was closed, they allowed William T. Williams and his four students into the building, locking the doors after they entered. Each of the four students created beautiful artwork using grids, just like William T. Williams. The night was perfect until... Everyone noticed that one of William T. Williams' paintings was missing. It was an art heist. Detectives were called in. Since the four students and William T. Williams were the only people in the building at the time of the heist, each of the students became a suspect. Let's meet the four students, I mean, suspects. Marvin the Magician, he's very mysterious. He's always appearing and disappearing. Then there's Shady Shamar. He's super sly, sneaky, and seems to snoop. Next, there's sweet old Granny. Her grandkids wanted her to have a fun night out of the house, so they gave her this art lesson. Last is Custodian Carl. He works at the museum, but decided to take the night off for an art class. He knows the floor plan of the museum well. The detectives began their investigation by watching the video footage from the security camera closest to the missing artwork. While they couldn't make out the person in the video footage, they did see a shadowy image appear twice that night during the class. To better determine the exact point that they saw those images in the video footage, the detectives created a number line. Here, we see the number line labeled zero and one. This represents the length of William T. Williams' class that night. The zero point is the start of the class, and the one represents the end of the class, meaning that this number line represents the whole class. The yellow dots on this number line represent the exact points in the video when the shadowy image was seen moving near the missing painting. The movement occurred one-fourth of the way through the class, and then again two-fourths of the way through the class. Next, the detectives interviewed each suspect. Now, assuming that each of the suspects were telling the truth, which suspect do you think committed the crime? As you listen to what each suspect has to say, pause the video and think about, could they be the criminal? Marvin the Magician says, I used magic to create my artwork. I went home early and missed the last one-fourth of the class. Shady Shamar says, I only left the room once. After painting for six-eighths of the class, I went to the restroom. I was only gone for one eighth of the class time. Sweet old Granny says, My arthritis was acting up. After sitting for about two eighths of the class, I went to take my meds. I came back halfway through the class. Lastly, Custodian Carl says, Well, some old lady spilled water all over the place out in the hallway. Around three-fourths of the way through the art class, I had to go mop the floor. Next, a detective followed the suspects back into the art classroom to see if he can find more clues. He even asked each of the suspects to describe their paintings, thinking this might serve as a clue. Because of all of this investigating, 
All of the suspects started to get nervous. However, only the true criminal started to tell lies. The innocent art students told the truth all night even when they were nervous. Listen to the descriptions each suspect gave of their painting. The criminal is the only one to lie as they describe their artwork. Marvin the Magician's description. My magic spell created a beautiful masterpiece. It is one eighth yellow, three eighths blue, and one half red. Shady Shamar said, I appreciate simplicity. My painting is one fourth purple and three fourths gray. Sweet old Granny said, My old eyes can't handle those newfangled bright colors. I painted one half of my painting pink, one fourth of my painting green, one fourth yellow, and two fourths purple. Custodian Carl said, well, I created a painting in our honor of my old army days. It's one fourth green, one fourth brown, one fourth gray, and one fourth peach. Pause the video and think about who is telling the truth and who is lying. If you need to, go back and replay the descriptions. Remember to change or rearrange the fractions to make them easier to work with. Also, be sure to use your knowledge of equivalent fractions. Now that you've seen the video and listened to the clues, who do you think committed the crime? Spoiler alert, I'm about to announce who committed the crime. If you haven't figured it out yet, pause the video here. Let's take a look back at our number line. Remember, one-fourth of the way through the class, there was a shadowy image in the video footage, and again, at two-fourths of the way through the class. Do you remember sweet old granny saying she went and took her medicines around two-eighths of the way through the class? If we split this number line into eighths, one-fourth is equivalent or equal to two-eighths. She also said that she returned about halfway through the class. Two-fourths is equal to one-half. Therefore, sweet old granny could have committed the crime. Let's take a look at her artwork. She said that one-half of her artwork was pink. Well, that's true. But then she said one-fourth of her artwork was green. Well, one-fourth of that right side is green, but we have to look at one-fourth of the whole artwork. Once we partition this artwork into fair shares, we realize that green spot isn't one-fourth of the artwork, it's one-eighth of the artwork. Therefore, sweet old granny was the one who committed the crime.